The IMF has been a bit hypocritical in all this because the signals have been there. You know, it's not today that we raise the issue of the finance minister cooking the books. He's been cooking the books over the last four years. What he does is he leaves out some big ticket budget items and puts them as footnotes so that he can get a better you know, fiscal report to, to give to the international community. He's used it to fool the IMF. He's used it to fool Moody's, Fitch, and all the rating agencies. He's fooled it, used it to fool the Economist Intelligence Unit, all of them, by giving a rosy picture that they are better economic managers. You know, but with the kinds of resources we left him, I'm surprised and shocked at his very abysmal uh, performance. We managed this economy with one oil field, the Jubilee field, if you remember. At the time we were leaving office, we had completed two more oil fields. That virtually tripled revenues from oil. I mean, with that kind of extra revenue, one, I mean, could just imagine what they could have done, you know, in terms of transforming this economy. But they've not been able to. I mean, you can see everywhere. There's nothing to show for it. Their only claim to fame is free SHS. You know, and so free SHS is being funded from the oil uh, revenues. But aside from that, you know, there's nothing to show uh, for it. And um, the signs were there that this economy was being mismanaged first by overborrowing. Over four years, he's gone onto the capital market and raised nine billion dollars. And nine billion dollars is only going into consumption. You don't see what it's being used for. Normally, if you go on the market and you raise money. You use a bit of it to repair your high interest local debt, but a lo some part of it you must use for other important projects that are tangible and that transform the economy. But that has not happened. Today, the single largest threat to the economy is the almost $1.5 billion that he owes um, um, independent power producers. We came up with the ESLA, and the way we structured the ESLA over five to six years would have finished paying off that debt. Today, that debt has ballooned to 1.5 billion. The independent power producers are threatening to shut down this country's power supply if the finance minister doesn't pay him. He's gone begging them. When they threaten, he'll find a little money and go and give to them and ask them to be patient. He's just waiting to hand over a broken economy to the next administration. The economy is already broken. COVID didn't break it. The thing is, if you have an economy, it must have sufficient buffers. And so if you say this was the best economy in Africa, and he was the best finance minister, and the economy was resilient, why is it that just one pandemic and your economy is already in ICU? Cote d'Ivoire is not in ICU. Rwanda is not in ICU. All the other countries are managing somehow. But your economy is comatose. We're almost going to grow. We're not going to grow. I mean, it's estimated we'll grow below 1%. You know, as a loan, other countries are growing at 3%, 4%. Of course, their growth forecasts have come down. But we have come down to zero. We borrowed almost 11 billion because of COVID. We don't know how you've administered it. You are giving the stimulus package to your party chairman and all that. You've taken their Momo numbers and you are sending it to them. You are using MBSSI to try and give monies to people to politically influence them, you know, for elections. I mean, this government has been a disaster, seriously. And um, I'm sure the day will come when Ghanaians will, will realize it. They use propaganda to hoodwink the public that they've done so well, we're the best economic managers. Businesses are collapsing. Just speak to the business community. People are struggling, you know, not because of COVID, even before COVID. I spoke to some businessmen who are not NDC. They have always voted for NPP. And when this government came into office, they said their businesses are struggling. I mean, the amount of profit they used to make under NDC has suddenly collapsed. They are struggling to pay their workers, and they're just trying to keep their businesses af afloat because they hope that there will be a change and that better times will come in, in the future.